Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a mono red Goblin Tribal deck featuring 4 copies of Goblin Ringleader, the true reason to play this type of deck, as we get access to a 4 mana 2 2 Goblin with haste, and when the Ringleader enters the battlefield, we get to reveal the top 4 cards of our library, put all Goblin cards revealed this way into our hand, and the rest on the bottom. So, Goblin Ringleader in a deck with 34 Goblins is almost guaranteed to find at least 1 Goblin, we're about 80% to find at least 2 Goblins, we're about 40% to find at least 3 Goblins and we're about 10% to find all four goblins, which is of course a dream. So the ringleader can provide a ton of advantage, as well as putting a hasty creature in play to pressure opposing planeswalkers and he puts life total, so it's an amazing card in this type of deck. Then another addition from M20, to strengthen the archetype is Icon of Ancestry, giving all our goblins plus one plus one, and for three mana we can tap the icon and look at the top three cards of our library to reveal a goblin and put it into our hand. So between the Icon of Ancestry and the Goblin Ringleader, we can provide a steady stream of goblins, even against multiple sweepers out of a control deck. So traditionally, tribal decks are pretty soft to sweeper effects, since you're just playing a bunch of creatures that die to those, but between the Icon and the Ringleader, we're actually comfortable playing a longer game, even against multiple multiple sweepers. So those are kind of the grindier cards in the deck. Of course we also have a nice low curve so we can beat down and potentially beat combo decks before they go off, even though the scapeshift matchup is not amazing for the deck. So let's take a look at our entire list. At one mana we've got four copies of Fanatical Firebrand, we see it out of mono red, and of course it is a goblin so fits perfectly into our deck, one mana, one one haste, and we can later sacrifice it to deal one damage to any target, maybe take out an early Lanor Elves. Then at 2 mana, one of the weaker goblins in the deck is Goblin Crater Maker, just to kind of fill out the curve and give us another 2 mana creature, 2 mana for a 2-2, and for 1 mana we can sacrifice it to deal 2 damage to any creature, or destroy a colorless non-land permanent so it can take out some artifacts or maybe one of the Karn and Ugin planeswalkers, but for the most part just a 2 mana 2-2 that can maybe take out a smaller creature from the opponent. Then we also have 4 copies of Goblin Instigator, making 2 1 1 Goblins. So this is nice in combination with Icon of Ancestry. It can give us more food for a Siege Gang Commander, which we'll get to in a second, or maybe increase the Goblin count for Volley Veteran. So it does play a pretty important role in the deck. And then we also have the full 4 copies of Amber Hauler from M20, great addition. And it's pretty similar to the Goblin Crater Maker. The major difference is that this can also deal 2 damage to any target, including Planeswalkers and players, whereas the Crater Maker is limited to only dealing damage to creatures, and that difference is pretty important. On the flip side, Amber Hauler does cost double red, so it doesn't get any discount from the Goblin Warchief, so there is still a small advantage to the Crater Maker there. Then at 3 mana, we've got a lot of powerful goblins, and it's difficult to choose which ones to play without going overboard and having too many 3 drops, especially considering we also have Icon of Ancestry at 3. So we've got the full 4 copies of Legion Warboss as one of the better ones, 3 mana for a 2-2 with Mentor, and at the beginning of combat on our turn we get to make a 1-1 red goblin creature token, and that token gains haste until end of turn and has to attack if able, so this is great at pressuring opposing planeswalkers, especially the ones at 1 loyalty, and can kind of build an army by himself, plays great with our different anthem effects, and can maybe sacrifice a token to a siege gang commander if it's gonna suicide, so the war boss is just excellent here. Then surprisingly we only have two copies of Goblin Warchief, whereas in older formats like modern you might see four copies of Goblin Warchief in Goblin decks, we only play two. The reason is that we have so many good three drops and it's difficult to fit them all in, and the other one is that we have a lot of goblins that have mana costs like the Amber Hauler and Goblin Che Warler that don't really get a discount from the Warchief, so having multiple Warchiefs doesn't really help you out, but the Warchief can still be very powerful giving all our goblins haste including himself, and giving a discount to all our goblin spells, so it makes it it easier to cast some of our cards like Ringleader and Siege Gang Commander makes it very easy to double spell. If we have 5 mana for example we can play Warchief and Legion Warboss and attack with a hasty Legion Warboss right away, so it can start mentoring, so it can lead to some very explosive turns, so it's still important to have a few copies of the Warchief in the deck. And then of course we've got the full 4 copies of Goblin Chain Warlor, which we all know by now. 3 mana, 3-3 three, three first strike, when it enters the battlefield deals 1 damage to each opposing creature and planeswalker, as well as dealing 1 damage to the opponent, so just great at finishing off small toughness creatures in combination with Firebrand and Amber Hauler, and maybe the Crater Maker we can take out larger creatures, and a 3-3 three, three first strike is also great, especially if it gets plus 1 plus 1 from the Icon of Ancestry. And then at 4 mana we've got our 4 copies of Goblin Ringleader, then 2 copies of Volley Veteran, which is kind of 
of the red ravenous chupacabra in this deck, dealing damage to a creature equal to the number of goblins we control. So the more goblins we have in play, the larger creature we can take out, and also a 4-2 creature by itself. So if we can attack with a hasty volley veteran after playing the Warchief, that can get in a ton of damage out of nowhere. And then last but not least, the full 4 copies of Siege Gang Commander, 5 mana for a 2-2, that when it enters the battlefield makes 3 1-1 one, one red goblin creature tokens, and for 1 and a red we can sacrifice any goblin, including the Siege Gang himself, to deal 2 damage to any target. So this is great at closing out the game if there's ever a board stall. And then our mana base is very simple, 24 beautiful basic mountains to make sure we can cast our more expensive goblins on time. So yeah, that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, and what do we think about this hand? It's nothing special. We don't have any of our powerful 3-drops. No ringleaders, but it seems playable enough. The instigator does play well with the volley veteran. Up against a turn 1 legion's landing, so... Is this vampires? Ooh, nice. There's a ringleader. Token gets in for 1. And another planes into Adanto Vanguard. So it could still technically be vampires, could be mono white, which at this point seems more likely. But yeah, the instigator lines up pretty well, can block the Vanguard, can trade for the vampire. Prevent the landing from flipping too quickly. And hopefully we can draw one of our many 3 drops next turn, since our hand's a little bit clunky. Of course, Goblin Chain Whirler would be pretty high up on our list. Opponent does attack with both. Yeah, I'm fine with. Blocking both here. Just want to preserve our life total. And there's a Pride of Conquerors to keep both alive. That's fine. And a Snowborn Sentry. Fair enough. Well, ask and you shall receive. So now the Vanguard again has to pay for life if they want to attack into the Chain Whirler. Probably still taking three at this point. As we see Sky Marcher. Zero points currently at seven permanents for the City's Blessing. And a Conclave Tribunal to exile Chain Whirler and get in for three. Alright, so now they're up to eight permanents. So next turn they could potentially... Ascend and make this into a 3-3 and make this fly. But uh, Volley Veteran, I think, is going to be the play here. Just taking out the Aspirant, prevent the CD's Blessing from happening. And then we can Ringleader a little bit later, since we've got plenty of plays in hand. And I think I'm fine trading Veteran for 4 life from the opponent if they want to attack with the Adanto Vanguard here, given our hands. Could also just take three and then attack for four. A lot of ways we can play this. Opponent's gonna run out of life eventually with the Vanguard, but I don't think we're gonna run out of goblins anytime soon. A land five for Siege Gang would be pretty good. Firebrand's also reasonable, although for now I'm probably just playing another veteran. Put on down to 10. Attacks with everyone, flips the landing. I guess I'll eat the sentry for free. Let's see, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So even if they make a token, they still don't have the city's blessing. Alright. And allegiance landing number 2. Alright, there's land 5, so we'll play Siege Gang. Um, attacking would trade for two tokens, essentially. The Flip Legion's landing could be an issue long term. Although, the 1-1s one don't really attack, and then eventually we can just burn them out with the Siege Gang. So I think we'll be fine. So I don't think I attack with a Volley Veteran. Now if opponent finds a Banalish Marshal or Loxodon, the 1-1 one -one tokens could be more annoying. Uh, 
And again, if they have another one of those uh, Pride of Conquerors, I think that's okay. Then they might have wanted to attack with the one ones as well, so it seems unlikely. Right, just lets them trade. Works for me. And I think I'll play the Ringleader, and then we'll see what we hit. And I can also play the Firebrand. Alright, hit uh, three creatures, not bad. So if I play the Firebrand, I can sacrifice it to blow up a Vampire. They can still make another one. So I probably am better off just playing Instigator and then kind of staying back here. And then next turn with the Chain Whirler, we can probably make an all-out attack. And even if they find Banalish Marshal, we can shoot it with the Siege Gang, and then the one damage from Chain Whirler will end up killing everything. So I guess a Loxodon might be the most annoying, but then they would also tap the Vampire, so they would probably die on the way back. So either way, they're probably in trouble here. Thanks for three. So they could have Pride of Conquerors again, or they could just be attacking because they would die anyway to the Chain Whirler. So I think I'll just take it. Since the Prides could get a little bit messy. And another Conclave Tribunal, the same on the Siege Gang. But we've got a backup. So, pretty sure they're dead. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand's not great, but we do have Icon to sink mana into to find more goblins. So it could still work out, plus if we find any of our expensive goblins, ringleaders, or siege gang commanders will be in, in good shape with four lands already. So I think I'm actually gonna keep... Turn on Island Storm Tamer. Alright, happy to kill that with the Firebrand before it gets out of hand. Also, if we're up against a mono blue deck, then it might be tricky to resolve the icon in the face of potential counter spells, including spell pierce. Right, it looks like it's just blue white flyers. Favorable wins on turn two. That's manageable. So the Firebrand's not going to be killing many flyers anymore now. But at least we don't have to worry about the icon getting countered. Second wins. And no more creatures, and there's a war chief. All right. So, what's the play? The thing is, we don't know for sure if we're gonna have any good attacks next turn if our opponent plays any flyer, which they presumably do. So I might want to go war boss into icon of ancestry, and then our three three goblins might still be able to get in there, as opposed to war chief into icon or war chief into war boss. Ooh, looks like our opponent might be holding a Spectral Sailor here since they had a small pause. So I don't think I want to attack with the Firebrand. I'll just let them eat my 1-1 Goblin token. And then I can keep the Firebrand to maybe finish off a Flyer. So yeah, there's a Spectral Sailor. Alright, fair enough. So next turn if I play the Icon, Warboss will grow up to 3-3. And then I can Mantra as well, although Empyrean Eagle is going to make the tricky. Since now they have a 4-5 Eagle. So now even Icon and the 1 damage from Firebrand is not going to be enough. So this is where we need to find cards like Amber Hauler, cards like the Volley Veteran to take out Eagle. I can go Warchief plus Instigator. I don't think it's quite worth it to attack with everyone, but I can attack with all the 1-1 goblins since they'll get to eat one anyway. But I don't want to lose a war boss or the war chief here. So I'll just send uh, these three. Pass a turn. Second Eagle, so lots of Anthem effects for the opponents. So 
So not what we wanted to see. Since our deck is good at killing small creatures, we're not great at killing larger creatures, especially when they fly. If they didn't fly, then we could like chum block, maybe with a siege gang commander, chum block and then deal two damage. But given that they all fly, um, we kind of have to race, and I don't think we have the tools to really do that here. Sadly, so yeah, looks like we'll be dead here. Can play I can name goblin. Probably should have played my mountain in case of a spell pierce, but it doesn't really matter here. Attack with everyone, and I guess we'll mentor. So we did put our opponent to 5, but they just had a few too many Anthem effects. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Only two lands, which is uh, the main concern here, otherwise our hand's pretty great. On the draw we can probably risk it. We've got the Amber Hauler and Instigator as early plays. Amber Hauler can maybe take out an opposing creature. And then Warchief essentially gives us land 4 for the Ringleader. So we just need to hit one land drop in 3 turns, which should be feasible. Up against the turn 1 Stomping Ground, there's a land. Alright. Gruel decks could present some large creatures that are difficult to kill, but we do have the Volley Veteran, which can maybe take one out. All right, it's gonna be a Temple Garden tapped, so some sort of Naya deck. Could be a Naya Feather deck. That's entirely possible. Probably just get the Amber Hauler out there, since the Amber Hauler doesn't fully take advantage from the War Chief's discount. Looks like they might have a shock though. Against the shock, if we knew they had it for sure, then playing Instigator makes more sense. And there's a 10th District Legionnaire with one man available, so it could be for a God's Willing, maybe a giant growth in green, who knows. If they God's Willing with protection from red, then they would get to eat the Chain Warlord next turn if we block. So I might be better off just playing Warchief and attacking for two, so we can make sure we can play Ringleader, hope they don't have another Shock or Reckless Rage. Having these 1-1 one -one tokens from the Instigator to Chum Block is going to be useful against the big Legionnaire. They've got a second one. Alright, so the damage is going to start adding up. At least we dodged a Feather so far, which is good. Another Volley Veteran. So I'm assuming that if they had some sort of removal spell for the War Chief, we would have seen it already. They definitely have a way to protect their 10th District Legionnaire and give it at least 1 plus 1 plus 1 counter. So playing Volley Veteran is not going to kill the Legionnaire, is what I'm trying to get to. So I think the play is just going to be to play a Ringleader for now. And then I can keep one creature back to kind of force them to use one of their pump spells. I'm not going to block with the War Chief anyway, so that might as well attack. And then we can kind of try and flood the board with uh, Instigator, now Crater Maker 2, as another cheap play. And hope to win the game through all the card advantage we're accumulating here. So we'll end up taking four, they can save their Legionnaire. It's gonna be a sheltering light. Scry to the bottom. And scry to the bottom again. So we're down to ten. If we draw a couple lands that would be nice. Since we're currently unable to really fully unload Playing a Volley Veteran seems okay, just take out Legionnaire. Um, could try and play more Goblins first, so that the Veteran deals even more damage. That could be reasonable, but if they have another Sheltering Light or God's Willing, it doesn't matter anyway how much damage we deal. So I think I want to start uh, playing Veterans here. And hope they can't kill any of our creatures in response. And then a 4-2 also just trades pretty well on this board. Alright, that worked. I'll just attack with the War Chief once again, happy to trade the Veteran. We don't really need to race when we have this many cards in hand, even though we could potentially have a two-turn clock ourselves. There's just too much risk of dying on the way back as well. Season of Growth. Let's see if they have any attacks. They do. 
Just uh, thinking if there's any reason to block the other one. Yeah, I'll block uh, there. And it's going to be giant growth, so we don't take any damage from the big one. Take two from the small one. Opponent draws from the season of growth. So now the opponent has kind of their own card draw engine. Really just want to draw lands here to help us unload our hand. But we keep drawing more goblins. So now what? Opponent is at 10, so we have to keep that in mind as well. We do get haste thanks to the war chief. So we can deal quite a bit of damage. So the play might just be war boss plus instigator. And then we'll have quite a few chum blockers with the instigator. And unless they have a collision colossus for trample, we'll be fine. I think that's acceptable. And then the war boss can get in there. Speeding up our clock and mentoring onto the token we make. I think I'll attack like this. It's probably safe enough to keep two tokens back. But this way we put our opponent to four. So it's gonna be pretty trivial to kill them next turn. So what we don't want to see is Collision Colossus. Put on bottoms with a scry. They could also play God's Willing, name Red. Legionnaire's protection from red, and uh, we can block it, but there's nothing we can do about that. So one Legionnaire is unblockable here, so if they draw into another giant growth, we're dead. Bottoms with the scry. Alright, let's see if they have it here. Because the Legionnaire now has protection from red, they also can't target it with their own Reckless Rage anymore, or Collision Colossus, so that's worth pointing out. So it's going to be Domri's Ambush with the other Legionnaire. But we'll still have our 1-1 one, one blocker. So we should be able to survive this turn. And uh, there's a good chance we have Lethal on the way back. So keeping back the second token ended up being pretty important here. And the opponent just scoops it up, so... Despite being stuck on three lands, we were able to beat the Naya Feather deck onto the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand seems pretty great, so we'll keep. Just need a fourth land here, and we get to curve out perfectly. Well, let's see what we're up against. Turn one Watery Grave. Alright, so hope to dodge a Cry of the Carnarium, basically. Could make a case for not playing the war boss, depending on what they do here. Looks like Grixis and an Augur Bolas. That actually lines up uh, annoyingly well against our board. Bond of Revival, so I guess your points on the Reanimator deck and not your typical control deck. I guess we'll just play war boss and then attack with all the one ones except for Firebrand. Since one of the tokens is going to get blocked anyway, might as well get into damage. But the Firebrand is still a bit too valuable that I don't think I want to attack with it. Tombbound Lich, that's another pretty decent blocker here. Alright, so we've got our work cut out for us. Amber Hauler to draw. So I can Amber Hauler plus Firebrand to potentially kill one of the three toughness creatures here. I could just attack with a War Boss and Mentor, and that's also two damage if they block, plus one for Firebrand. So I could take out both creatures, but then we would also lose a War Boss to Death Touch from the Lich. So maybe it is better to just kill the Lich and then attack with the War Boss and uh, start Mentoring. I think I like that. And I'm okay attacking with everyone. If they want to eat a 1 1, they take a bit more damage. So, this also implies that they probably don't have a Cryo Carnarium, otherwise, we would have seen them 
prevent the most damage and then sweep the board on the following turn. Stitch your supplier to fill the graveyard. They've got the bond in hand already, so they just need to put something uh, juicy in the graveyard. Let's see if the Lich puts anything in the graveyard that's scary, just another bond. So it looks like Krapoon doesn't quite have what they're missing at the moment, which is good for us, gives us more time. Although the second Lich is another annoying blocker here. Attacking into the Stitcher Supplier, also not the best, but we're forced to attack with the War Boss. Although once we get the Siege Gang down, we can sacrifice a token before it suicides into the Lich. So I don't think I want to quite suicide attack with the War Boss. Because if I attack with War Boss and I'm kind of incentivized to play Firebrand to finish off the Lich, but then I'm not playing the Ringleader. And I think playing Ringleader is probably better here. Suppose I should have uh, gone to combat first since I'm not attacking with the Ringleader anyway. And there's a chance that they uh, don't block with a Lich if we do. I don't think I'm actually killing the Stitcher Supplier here since I don't want to fuel their graveyard. Since they probably have another bond in hand. So they're just looking to put something in the graveyard and I don't want to trigger the Stitcher Supplier here. So I'll just deal one damage to the Lich. Had a pretty nice hit with the Ringleader, although we're just missing the fifth land here for these Siege Gangs. Thought Erasure doesn't really do much. Takes the Siege Gang anyway. Alright, and there's a land perfect. We also have Crater Maker Firebrand to once again kill the Lich. I could just play the Siege Gang and then next turn I can start sacking Goblins to burn them out. There's no easy way to avoid the Stitcher Supplier dying here if they really wanted to die, because I would have to, like, firebrand my own token, which seems pretty bad. So I think the play is probably just Siege Gang. I could attack first, since they know about the firebrands, but then they just put Lich in front of War Boss, and then I'm forced to firebrand to kill the Lich. So I don't think I'm attacking once again, other than the one one that's forced to, so I guess we'll do that first. Get it out of the way. Stitcher Supplier blocks. Hopefully they don't find anything too scary, like a Dracoseth would ruin our day. Villas. Villas we can potentially still beat. Eh, let's play Siege Gang. And then we're set up to potentially kill the opponent next turn. Alright, Blood for Bones. So it's not even going to be a hasty Villas, just a Villas on defense. Get back Stitcher Supplier to set up the graveyard once again. They probably still have a Bond in hand, is my guess. That's a nice interaction. Villas plus Shocklands to draw two cards. But they also need to preserve their life total here, since Siege Gang threatens to get in a ton of damage. And the land means we get three Siege Gang activations, so I think if we just attack with everyone, we should have it here. I can sacrifice whatever they block with the Tomebound Lich, so they don't get any life from the lifelink. Mentor onto whatever. Alright, so activate Siege Gang. Deal two to the opponent, sacking War Boss. Opponent can draw all the cards they want. Do the same with the Ringleader. And finally, the Siege Gang is going to sacrifice himself, plus we have a bunch of goblins getting in there. Sweet, managed to be the Grixis Reanimator, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. We've got a reasonable hand, we're kind of missing one of our power cards, but uh, I'll still uh, keep this hand. We've got a reasonable curve, hoping to draw into a Ringleader, as usual. Alright, well, <laughs> not going to complain. So do I have Firebrand, the opponent's Firebrand right now? Might want to keep it for a Steamkin, but then they can just Firebrand their own Firebrand first, but then I get to deal one damage to them, so I basically gain one damage. Yeah, I think that's how I'm going to play it here. Just play Firebrand, no attacks. If they attack with their Firebrand, then we'll uh, reconsider whether we want to block or not, because now they get to enable Spectacle if we don't block. But keeping this as an answer for Steamkin is pretty important, otherwise it gets out of hand. We have Chaorlor as another answer to Steamkin, so if I can just delay the Steamkin by a turn, that's already good enough for me. 
So I think I'm supposed to just take it. Uh, it's going to be a lava runner. And point says go. So on tap. All right, not a firebrand. Don't think I'll need the second one. If I play instigator, that's bad if the opponent has their own chain warrior. So maybe playing firebrand is better since then I can at least take out a lava runner. I guess it makes sense. And then pass a turn. So we're trying to play around an opposing chain roller and steamkin as best as we can. Opponents attacks with both. So I think I still take it. We're gonna kill the opposing firebrand with our chain roller anyway, so trading doesn't make a ton of sense there. And I would rather sack a firebrand next turn to finish off the lava runner, so yeah, I'll just take two. Could still see a second main chain roller. There we go. All right. So now we can just take out the Lava Runner. So dueling Chain Whirlers. And now if they play Steamkin, it's not as bad since they've already played a lot of red cards out of their hands. So hopefully it stays small. Lightning take out Chain Whirler. All right, hopefully the ringleader delivers here. So far our opponent thought we were maybe the regular model red deck. But now with the ringleader... They know we're on goblins. Looks like they have a shock. That's fine. All right, found three more goblins, including a second ringleader. So we're definitely gonna be playing goblins for the rest of the game here. Question is, can our opponent burn us out before we can empty our hand? Already down to seven, but they only have one card left in hand. So, what's the plan here? Probably want to try and set up the Volley Veteran for next turn. Playing Legion Warboss is also pretty tempting, since we could make a token that can attack past a Pyromancer, and then I can still play Firebrand, Chump, Chain Whirler, and then kill Pyromancer. So that could work out. Hopefully they don't have uh, another removal spell here. Looks like they do. All right, lightning strike. At least they're not burning our face. So if they're burning our goblins, then we're buying more time. So I'll play firebrands with a plan of chomping chain Warlord and shooting the pyromancer. So we won't take any damage. I wouldn't be able to kill anything with a volley veteran next turn, but uh, that's okay. Main face light up the stage, finds shock Steamkin. If they shock the Firebrand, they can attack with the Chain Whirler. But then I get to take out the Pyromancer, so I end up taking three down to four. And more Chain Whirlers. Opponent still at 19, so... Yeah, we're probably gonna get burnt out before we manage to turn the corner here. Needed to draw a couple more lands along the way as well. So for now, I guess we'll play Instigator plus Amber Hauler. I can chump the Chain Whirler with one of the tokens, and then next turn, Veteran's enough to kill the Chain Whirler. Or I could Chain Whirler to kill the Steamkin, depending on what's better. So there's Steamkin, and just a Lance. All right, so we've got some options. I can play Volley Veteran to kill Chain Whirler. That seems like the most important uh, thing we need to kill at the moment. And our opponent stepped out, so we know that's gonna work. And then um, I can probably afford to attack with at least the Amber Hauler. I could have also played Chain Warlord first to make sure to kill the Steamkin before it gets out of hand. Opponent found an Experimental Frenzy, so that's not good for us, so... Gotta try and close out the game as soon as possible. So I think we need to take out the Steamkin. If this doesn't work, I can still play second Ember Hauler to finish it off. 
All right, that worked. And now Chain Whirler versus Amber Hauler. Probably better to Chain Whirler. Got our opponent down to 11. We've got 7, 8 power in place, so yeah, for opponent breaks this turn, we could get there. Down to 1, so anything basically kills us. Chain Whirler will do it. Alright, so close game. Needed a couple more lands to fully unload our hand in time. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Turn to Instigator, turn 3 Warboss, and then a Siege Gang to top off our curve. As always, looking for ringleaders. An Icon of Ancestry would be quite powerful with this hand since we've got so many token makers. Facing a turn 1 Hallowed Fountain, so it could be the Escape Shift deck, could be some sort of Asper Control deck. Probably just the Instigator. Alright, Asper confirmed, and it's going to be a turn 2 Freebooter, which does miss, but it does block the 1-1s pretty well, so that was unexpected. Otherwise, we would have uh, preferred to play the Crater Maker first. I guess we can, like, Crater Maker kill the Freebooter. Is it better than just playing the War Boss? Probably not. And then I'll attack with everyone, since they get to kill one of our 1-1 one -one tokens regardless. Might as well get into damage. And then, uh, yeah, we drew into the Ringleader, so that's what we were hoping for. So some sort of Asper deck featuring Freebooter. Maybe some Flying Synergies, maybe some Pirate Synergies. Some Enter the Battlefield Synergies. As we see Deputy take care of Warboss. Alright, opponent knows about the Crater Maker, so if they were to block a 1-1 one -one with the Deputy, we would get the Warboss back. That being said, I'm probably better off just playing the Ringleader for now. Alright, not a bad haul. And just say go for now. Freebooter gets in for one. Deputy also pretty good against tokens, since they can exile all the tokens at once. So playing the Siege Gang might not be the best idea if we don't have any mana up to sack our tokens in response. Ooh, Spawn of Mayhem, so... It is some sort of flying aggro deck after all. I guess Deputy just a good card nowadays against the Scape Shift deck being able to deal with all the zombies at once. Although Volley Veteran was a pretty amazing draw here as well. So we've got some options. Probably just Volley Veteran killing Spawn of Mayhem is where we want to start. And then no real point in attacking. Suppose the Ringleader could attack and they might not block fearing a Fanatical Firebrand. Opponent plays a land and passes, and the Warchief could also allow for some explosive turns. So what I could do is play the Warchief and play the Crater Maker, and then still have one mana up to sack the Crater Maker to potentially kill the Deputy here if they block. That seems nice. And I think I'm okay sending everyone. If they double block the Warchief, I can kill the Freebooter with the Crater Maker as well. So we don't lose the Warchief. Opponent down to 10. Our opponent didn't do much last turn, and yeah, opponent's just gonna pack it up, so they must have drawn quite a few lands here. Freebooter missing, Spawn of Mayhem dealt with right away, so things lined up pretty well for us. Alright, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.